Okay, let's go ahead and go to our journeys. Um, lesson two, our new story for the next two weeks is my family. So if you are in your classwork and on Google Classroom and you go down to journey stories and reader's notebook assignments, you will see 914 to 925, that's the dates that it'll be available. Journeys, my family story. Here's your story. Make sure you listen to it every day, okay? And then here are the slides with everything that you should be learning about the next two weeks, okay? We have our spelling words, phonics, short E, O, and U. Um, we're going to learn how to use a glossary. We have our vocabulary words, and our vocabulary words are on this slide. So let's go ahead and read through them. So we have the word remembered. Mom remembered my birthday. She never forgets. Over here is the definition of the vocabulary words. Remembered means thoughts about things in the past. So it's because it's in the past because it ends with an E-D, remembered. Okay, I remembered that I needed to do whatever it was that I needed to do. Okay, so now if you can, you can take away the E-D, and it turns into remember. Do you remember? Or um, so you can you can use it in different ways. Okay. So the number two word is porch. They sat outside and talked on the front porch. A room attached to the outside of a house. Number three, crown. This girl wears a crown on her head for her birthday. Crown, a head covering made of gold and jewels. Number four, spend. These girls spend time together. They play every day. To use time or energy to do something, spend. Stuck, while on vacation, their car got stuck in the mud. It can't move. Stuck, attached to something else. Visit, these grandparents like to visit. They see their grandchildren a lot. Visit, go see a person or a place. Cousin, my aunt and uncle have three children. Each child is my cousin. Cousin, the son or daughter of your aunt or uncle. And then the last one is piano. The father teaches his child to play the piano, a musical instrument. Piano, a large musical instrument that has keys to press. Okay, so you'll see these words in the story as we read it. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the story. Click on it, and we're going to listen to it. I'm going to stop My it every family. now and then. By George and Kona. I am Camilla. I live in Miami with my mother, Damaris, my father, Roberto, and my brother, Rene. My mother came from Cuba. My father came from Puerto Rico. Okay, so on this page... Who is giving the information in this selection? So who is talking? Who is the, um, who is talking on this page? Okay. That's right. Camilla is giving the information. How do you know? Exactly. I know because the writer uses the word I. She says, I am Camilla. I live in Miami with my mother. Okay, so because she says I, I know it's Camilla because she tells you who it is. I am Camilla. Okay, so Camilla is talking. She is the narrator. The narrator is who tells the story. My mother and I go to school together. That's because... Whoops. Let me fix this. She teaches Spanish in my school. When we are at home... I like to help her cook dinner. Okay, so why does Camilla introduce her family right away? Okay, yeah, because she does this because the story is going to be about her family, okay? So that is what the story is about, about her family. So that's why she goes, she goes ahead and introduces her family.
Sometimes when my grandma Marta comes to visit, I dress up and put on a show for her. Today, she is teaching me a song. It goes like this. There once was a sailor at sea who liked to play the guitar. When he remembered his faraway land, he picked his guitar and started to sing. On the high sea, on the high sea, on the high sea. Rene is my little brother. Our friends and family come to the house for his birthday. We play games, eat, and sing happy birthday to him. Here is my family. Grandmother Marta and Grandfather Rigoberto had four children. Almost all of them came to Renee's birthday party. Okay, so you see that diagram on um, the first page? How does it help you understand the, the selection? So how does looking at the diagram with the pictures, uh, the paintings of the people, and the yellow lines are going down to the different names, how is that helping you understand what's going on? Okay, so it shows all of Camilla's relatives and how they are related. Whenever she mentions someone in the story, I can look at this chart to see how they are related to Camilla. Okay, so at the very top, you see Marta and Rigoberto. That's the grandmother and the grandfather. Okay, they had four children. So the four children are Andres, Maria, Martika, and Damaris. Okay, the second name under those names are who they are married to. So Andres and Darlene, Maria, Irene, and Victor, Martika and Miguel, Damaris and Roberto, okay? That's who they're married to. And then below them is Victor, Mar Isabel, Victoria, um, Valeria, Vanessa, Gabriella, Leticia, Renee, and Camilla. Okay, so those names are the names of the kids of the people above them. Okay, so that's called a family tree. Okay. Grandma came with Aunt Maria, Irene, and Victoria. Uncle Andres came with Victor and Mar Isabel. Aunt Martika, Uncle Miguel, Gabriella, and Leticia came too. Soon the house was full. We played many games. Aunt Maria Irene showed us how to play hopscotch. Little Leticia put on a crown to dance. Grandpa Rigoberto danced with Cousin Mar Isabel. Okay, so if we look back at this diagram, of the family tree, let's see. Aunt Maria, Irene, and Victoria. Right here. Whoops. Okay, so if we look back at this diagram right here. Um, how do the photos on page 50 help you know more about the family members? So, this birthday party. This right here. And then on page I came with 50, Aunt Maria. How does it help you know more? Yeah, so you can see these are the different families, okay, of the people listed on the diagram. So the photos show specific people named in the chart, okay? Now you know what they look like. So they used, you saw the names, now you see what they look like. Why do you think the author used photographs instead of illustrations in this selection? So why is he re using real photographs? Because he wanted the readers to see what the people look like and know the story is true. Why do you think the author wrote this selection? To describe what a family of someone my age is like. Yeah, Irene and Victoria. Uncle. Okay. Uncle. Let's go ahead. 
go back to where we were. On Sundays, we go to church with Grandma. Then, we all go to Aunt Martika and Uncle Miguel's house. After lunch, we play music and sing. Okay, what instruments does the text name? Okay, so what instruments does the text um, say that they're playing? Okay, so they're playing a double bass, a violin, a piano, a clarinet, and a flute. Okay, you see all the different musical instruments in the picture? Right, so there are some music instruments that are not named in the text. What are they? How do you play them? Okay, I see a tambourine. This is a tambourine. And you smack it with your hand. I see, let's see, these are maracas. Okay. Um, what else is there? That might be a horn right there. Okay, so there's a lot of different instruments going on. Okay, so why do you think the author mentions music so many times? Okay, because the author wants to show that music is important to Camilla's family. Okay, he wants to let you know that that's what Camilla's family really loves to do. Uncle Miguel plays the double bass. Uncle Andres plays the violin. Aunt Darlene plays the piano. Victor plays the clarinet. And Mar Isabel plays the flute. We spend the rest of the day in the backyard. The grown-ups play dominoes while Uncle Andres tells funny stories. Gabriella and I sit on the porch and paint pictures. How can the reader tell from the text and from the photographs that Camilla's family members love each other? So how can you tell by looking at the pictures and by reading the text that Camilla's family members love each other? That's right, because it looks like they spend lots of time together and they seem very happy in all the photos. What kind of person do you think Camilla is? If you look at the text and the photos, what, what kind of person do you think she is? And it says right here, Gabriella and I sit on the porch and paint pictures. So who is I again? That's right, Camilla. Okay, Camilla is narrating the story. She is telling the story. And this is her and Gabriella painting pictures on the front porch. So Camilla seems to enjoy quiet activities as well as active ones. Has a very positive has very positive feelings about other people, likes to be helpful, and appreciates what others do for her. Okay, that's the kind of person Camilla is. What I like best is when Poppy takes us fishing. Most of the time, my hook gets stuck on a rock. I can't wait to catch my first fish. The end. Okay, going back to that last picture. And Whoops. Stuck on a rock. Okay, looking at the picture, how does the photo give a lot more information than what you read in the text? Okay, how can you look at this picture and what do you what else do you see besides what you just read? Right, I can tell that the father and Camilla love each other, that they live near the ocean a river or a big lake. Okay, I can't really tell if that is the ocean, but it, you know, it could be 
the ocean or river or big lake. And I can tell it is probably nice outside by what they are wearing. So she's she has some long sleeves on. He has a short sleeve shirt on. So it might be not very cold, but it's also not too hot. Um, so it looks like it's a nice day. There's some white clouds in the in the sky. And it it just looks um looks nice out. So when you guys are reading your stories, always look at the pictures and ask yourself what is going on in those pictures. That's very important to understand what you're reading, to be able to comprehend or understand what you're reading. Okay? All right, well, that's it for today. We're just going to do the story today, and tomorrow we'll do the reader's notebook pages. All right? Thank you. I can't wait to catch my first fish.